Hey, how's it going everybody? Welcome to Mushroom Wonderland. Me and my dog Gunner are gonna head out into the woods, see what kind of wild mushrooms are growing in February of 2023. If you have an interest in mushrooms, if you've been curious about them and don't know that much, this is the perfect channel for you. So make sure to hit that subscribe button and give a thumbs up so that you can help videos like this go further. So me and Gunner are gonna do our like uh, update that we haven't done in a little while. And we're gonna just head out there, see what kind of mushrooms are growing, help identify them their possible uses, if they're edible or deadly or hallucinogenic or whatever. We'll just go out and see what kind of mushrooms are growing out here. So thanks for joining. Let's head off into Mushroom Wonderland. Welcome to Mushroom Wonderland. My name is Aaron Hilliard. I am the creator of Mushroom Wonderland here on YouTube, over on Instagram, on TikTok. You can find us on Patreon and Rumble. And uh, so today I am out here in February in Western Washington in a little city park. Um, pretty heavy conifer dominant forest here. Me and my dog Gunner just gonna do one of these update videos because I haven't done one in a while. And uh, we just go out into the woods and we look at what wild mushrooms might be growing. Kind of cold, darkest part of winter, right? Uh, kind of the middle of February right now. And uh, it's just not good mushroom growing time. But there are still some things growing out here. So let's go find out what's in the woods on today's episode of Mushroom Wonderland. Mm -hmm. one of the small little bonnet mushrooms growing here and the needle duff probably mycena robusta it's been kind of dried out uh, they're a little darker colored cap when they're younger and more moist but these often grow in big troops white spored kind of gray looking mushrooms mycena robusta couple more large Mycena Robusta. So yeah, these these guys can get pretty big. So hygrophonous cap, that means it kind of fades as it dries out. That's one of the features of uh, mushrooms in the genus Psilocybe too. They'll exhibit that same thing, but these are really pretty, look like little umbrellas. This is a pretty large one. Here's more of the Mycena Robusta. Oh, just busted the cap off, but you can see white gills, kind of gray looking, yeah? Just growing right out of the forest floor, not, not necessarily on a log or anything. Just coming out of the forest floor, so. A lot of species of Mycena. This one just happens to be blooming right now in the middle of February. So this little mushroom that I've came across here on the side of the trail is known as Clytosabe sclerotoidea. It grows from a sclerotia, which is basically a big growth on the fruiting bodies of Helvella species. So it's a basidiomite growing on an ascomite. Uh, I know these are big words. If you're new to mushrooms, it's usually the other way around. Usually ascomites grow on basidios. But this one likes to grow on Helvella lacrinosa here in the PNW. Although I don't see any fruiting bodies around of the Helvella, which is curious. But there's been studies where they looked at the cellular structure and found cells from the Helvella. So Clytosabe, a genus of mushrooms, it's got a lot of poisonous uh, species in it. So probably a good one to avoid. But still pretty cool. This one's growing as a parasite on Helvella species. So the Clytosabe sclerotoidea. Mm -hmm. 
Sometimes looking at old dead uh, stumps like this can be a good place to look for mushrooms. I don't see any uh, obvious fruiting bodies growing off of it. Um, all right, so this little beauty that we found here growing all alone, the staghorn fungus, Calicera viscosa, this one, uh, an orange jelly fungus related to Dacrymyces. It's related to the orange jelly fungus, but it looks more like a coral fungus, but it's actually really waxy. So, Calocera, meaning calo as a prefix means beautiful, and Sera in ancient Greek uh, means waxy. So, beautiful and waxy. The orange jelly antler, or uh, it's also known for having tuning fork like basidia, where the spores are produced. I hate when you're just trying to have some peace and quiet walking in the woods. It's just constantly the sound of airplanes. It's like, go away. Ugh. Noise pollution. Ooh, look at the end of this log. How beautiful is that? We have trichaptum growing right here with that algae on it. So green looking coniferous false turkey tail, if you will. Then we have Fomitopsis mounsiae, the red belted conch. You see that red belt on it? Red belted, I don't know. It's got that white belt. So this is a younger one and a younger one yet. It's a pretty good study of the different ages, you know? They start out like a little blob, get a little bit bigger, and eventually become one of these. Underneath here is the uh, spore bearing surface. So millions of spores fall out of here. And these are just chewing up the wood here. So two different funguses within this hemlock, this western hemlock log, um, doing their job to break it down, send it back into usable soil for new trees and plants here in the forest. Right here is some invasive holly. This stuff's not native and it has a tendency to take over. Real sharp leaves on it. So some of the county parks around here are making an effort to try to cut it down but it really is growing everywhere and uh, not so good look at all this really nice if you're making Christmas ornaments and wreaths and stuff though Here's like an old firewood round, an old round of a log has some pretty hammered looking little mushrooms growing here. Tattered, beat by the weather and the rain, they're old. They're probably in the same genus as this little fella here, which would be Gallarina. So the little moss bells, these ones are like Gallarina semilanciata. Uh, it's got kind of an orange brown colored gills and spore deposit. Um, real striate cap. Talked about these on other recent videos. Real winter loving little mushrooms. This one has got, you know, this tan colored uh, stipe instead of the black stipe. And sometimes it'll have like little hairs on it. This one not so much. But anyways, the Gallarina semilanciata. If it has a really black stipe and a really tough black stipe, probably Gallarina vitiformis. But these ones... Uh, we'll just call them moss bells. They might deserve a new name, uh, but yeah, pretty little mushrooms. You gotta slow down and like keep your eye sharp if you wanna see if you wanna see some mushrooms because they're not very obvious right now. Look at this little deposits of hail. So it's been hailing around here. It's been pretty cold. In the tangled up brush of the forest of the Northwest, sometimes using logs like this works as a nice bridge across all of the debris.
This little guy is the Gallerina vitiformis, another moss-loving mushroom. They call them moss bells, the whole family or genus of Gallerina. These ones uh, have a really tough black stipe, so Gallerina vitiformis, another moss bell. Common winter mushroom. Just right down here on this mossy log. We've got a few mushrooms growing, one here. Oh, another one there. A couple more over here. Pretty, let's have a look. So these are some really interesting mushrooms growing here on these sticks and twigs. Uh, appear to be conifer twigs here, really heavily conifer forest. And so this is in the genus Foliota. So it could be a little confusing because we're used to seeing foliota that are very decorated with a lot of scales and gems and stuff. Um, these ones are pretty plain. The cap is pretty smooth except for a little bit of scales in the center of the disc that will kind of disappear with age. Uh, rain will wash them off also. They have a very flocose stipe. And so this is pretty typical of a foliota. Although one of the less decorated foliotas, it's uh, called... Uh, foliota decorata you know it's not all that decorated and it doesn't grow in big clusters like other foliotas so this is a somewhat common mushroom although i don't usually see them this late in the season um, it's you know small scales compared to other foliotas could be confused with a gymnopolis um, always growing on wood uh, these not recommended to eat a lot of these are pretty poisonous but Beautiful little mushrooms here in the PNW, the Foliota decorata. Look at all the different mosses growing in this area, isn't that beautiful? bunch of uh hyphaloma fasciculari sulfur tufts popping up look at that fluorescent yellow color it's pretty dark in these woods and it's actually really bright so the sulfur tuft really common white rot decayer growing in this old blown out stump and they're just fruiting right now middle of february they don't care very prolific mushroom poisonous don't eat the sulfur tufts Ooh, so check out this cool log I came across out here in the woods. This one's got a couple of really nice Ganoderma applinatum. The artist conch in a, in a pancake stack formation. Another one growing here. So these have a really white, poor surface underneath. And they bruise really easily, so you can draw on them, write things. Um, and people actually make beautiful art with these mushrooms, so... Um, over here, man, on this other side, let me show you this guy. Look at this beautiful beast on the same tree. This one, Fomitopsis ocracia. Big mushroom. So, big old brown rot decayer eating this conifer log. And kind of surprising to see the applinatum on the conifer. Typically, it's a... Uh, it's a hardwood loving mushroom, but this is undoubtedly a old western hemlock and the Ganoderma growing well on it. So maybe it's another species, maybe it's Ganoderma brownii, not sure, but uh, this tree very productive for fungal life out here. Beautiful area of the forest too, I love these trees that are just dripping in moss. Or just, it's really cozy in here.
Look at this beautiful flush of turkey tail. So I do hate to be beating a dead horse because I talk about these mushrooms so often in my videos, but they are important because they're a really highly studied medicinal mushroom. So they're growing in fan shapes of concentric rings growing off of a hardwood log like this. And underneath, it's going to have a white, porous surface. So if it's smooth and the colors match the top of the cap, it's probably sterium, which is the false turkey tail, which is also not dangerous. But these mushrooms have these concentric rings. These are really beautiful colored ones uh, with maybe a little algae growth because there's green bands in there, which is a little bit unusual. But brilliant, beautiful flush of Trimedes versicolor or the turkey tail. Always happy to run across these and they grow all year round. So what a pretty mushroom. So if we look at this stick laying right on the side of the trail here, it's got these adorable little mushrooms, little orange jelly mushrooms. There's several mushrooms around here that look like this that are orange jelly. These ones are uh, commonly called the alpine jelly cone. Um, the scientific name Gwipiniopsis alpina. Um, so supposedly an alpine mushroom, but these are growing right near sea level. So cute little jelly things and pretty sure they're edible, but they're just so small. You'd never really gather enough to make a meal and they're always growing on a little stick usually not much bigger around than three quarters of an inch or so but uh, they sure add a lot of color to a kind of a cold and drab forest this time of year beautiful little mushrooms always growing on a little conifer stick so the alpine jelly cone guipiniopsis alpina sometimes you got to get belly deep in the brush to get to where the good spots are you know what i mean you can't just stay on the trail all the time and expect to find the coolest mushrooms you got to get out there into the woods you know got to get dirty you got to be not afraid to get down on your knees to look at mushrooms up close and to get cool photos so dress accordingly what a beautiful spot I just love all the moss here in the pnw so there were still some mushrooms, some really interesting ones even. So there's never a bad time to go looking for mushrooms. So thanks for joining this episode. And we'll see you on the next one. Much love everyone. Peace.